Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport and today we are going back to Formula E once again this time for the Monaco E-Prix from season 3 back in 2017 now the last race in Mexico City was an absolute banger actually literally a banger so this one has a lot to live up to but it is Monaco it's a very different kind of feeling to a race whether it's Formula 1 or Formula E or anything at Monaco so it's always a very special occasion. Now, the grid is exactly the same as it was for the last race. So, have they had time to calm everything down? Maybe this race will be a bit more chill. Let's find out. So with that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. But after you've done that, let's jump into the video. Go on, and we are racing immediately and a very good start from Degrassi. Tucks right in behind Buemi. He's got to hold off Nelson Piquet. Trouble behind, Piquet locks up behind Degrassi in the second turquoise and black car. Little bumping and boring. Somebody's going to lose a wing. There's a bit of virgin bodywork trailing off Sam Bird's rear end, but they're all safely through corner one. Mike Conway, they didn't make it through there two years ago. This time, they're all down to corner three and four, and it looks like everybody's got most of their car still attached. Yeah, they're fairly sense of winter turn. One, you can tell everyone was a bit uh, hesitant going in there. It did get three wide at one point, but um, I think people just feel better of it, got back into single file through there. But, uh, uh, yeah, looks like positions haven't changed too much throughout the uh, the first lap here. Look at the multicolored red, yellow, green car of Lucas de Grassi in second place. He's got Nelson Piquet Jr. all over the back, then Piquet oh. in the barriers. Now we've seen that in qualifying. Piquet may have damaged the rear wheel, rear suspension already. The blue car in front, that's Sebastian Buemi, already a second away, first of. 51 laps. This is a huge lap count. So the title rivals Sebastian Buemi and Lucas Degrassi starting on the front row. It looks like it's going to be a race long battle between those two which is a pretty good prospect. Um, I'm surprised everyone survived that first lap. There was a lot of crunching so I presume there was contact but everyone seemed to make it through. So, so far so good and hopefully we get a real fight in this one. Pick a line, any line, but not the one that he used. He, he's damaged the nose and the rear wing. Sebastian Buemi, fastest lap again. So still Buemi racking in the fastest lap. Lopez, fastest I mean, little, second little sector, yeah. Second three, quickest. Somehow he's managed to, uh, maybe it's reduced the drag, the angle of that wing. Looking at that battle again with Mauro Engel leading Samba. There's Engel with the red highlights on the front of his Venturi car. Engel lives here in Monaco, Venturi based here in Monaco. They were so excited with the pace that that car produced in the qualifying group stages. Oh, and Bird in the wall, and that's a really big impact into Tabak. Broke, yeah, back end broke away, and it's... it's right. Serious damage to the right rear corner at the moment. He's going to have to pit. Yeah. Just spot, that's, spot. that's really going to destroy box, the race box, now. Box, box, box. Well, now, yeah, listen. Yeah. Box, box. You know, we thought Buemi's race so was over in Mexico, yeah. didn't we, when he pitted so early, but... Eight laps in 51, he can't go the distance. So I think I may have jinxed it when I said everything needs to calm down a bit. It's been a pretty calm race to the point where there hasn't really been any overtaking or even battling of any kind. In fact, Buemi has gapped Degrassi by well over a second. Looks like he's got the race under control. Maybe this is a strategy thing from Degrassi. We'll find out later in the race. But the first thing that has happened is Sam Bird has gone wide, hit the wall, damaged his car. Second race in a row that Sam Bird has retired, effectively. He's gone into the pits, into his second car, but he's not going to make it to the end. So we're pretty much done for Sam Bird again, which is a shame. So let's look at the usable power on these cars and the way that they're on the brakes and rolling into the corner here at turn one. Yeah, that's going to be one of the trickiest points, as we can see here, the change in the front nose and the rear end yeah. they fixed already. Oh, they're changing now, actually, yeah. sorry. It looked like it was actually back in his normal position, but uh, you can see one side is broken. Well, we start with no airflow means it's not being pushed down, so it's sort of sprung back up slightly floppily into position. Nikki Shields is down there at DS Virgin. Well, I'm just down here in the DS Virgin garage, and obviously you can see that the mechanics are working as fast as they possibly can to get that car back out on track. We don't really know what happened to Sam. He was just pushing really hard, as you always seem to. He was looking for that extra inch, and clearly his wing just 
clipped the wall and has caused some damage. But they've got the car back out. No doubt he is probably going to just try and set the fastest lap. So we are about a fifth of the way through the race. Still pretty quiet so far, still Buemi out in front. But Jose Maria Lopez has also been called in the pit, so this has been a terrible race for Virgin. Both their cars are at the back of the field at Sandbird, several laps down. Their weekend's pretty much already done. Now let's take a moment to announce the Fan Boost winners. Uh, the FIA Formula E.com site and Twitter. Sebastian Buemi picks up his 12th Fan Boost voting victory. Stefan Sarazan, a rare visitor to Fan Boost. He'll have the opportunity to use his power in his second race car, as will Luca Degrassi as he tries to stay on terms with title rival Sebastian Buemi. Remember, it comes up in the second car after the mid race car switch. So still not a lot happening. Buemi is controlling the pace out the front pretty easily. There are some movers in the field. Daniel Lapp looks pretty racy in this one. Rosenquist is charging as well. So it looks like we're building up to things happening here because so far not a lot has happened. What I will say is Fan Boost was as pointless in season three as it was when they finally got rid of it in season nine. Honestly, Sebastian Buemi and Lucas Degrassi have had it at every race ever by the like by my memory alone, I'm pretty sure they always get it. And I'm pretty happy that it's gone, to be honest. And they're, bat they're very, very close. Turn one again. Yeah. He's blocking on the inside, Nelson. Whoa, uh, and Van's gonna get him this time. He's done. got the overlap, he's got the overlap. He's gonna force the issue. Oh. Piquet's still there for me. Oh. Is through, he's gonna go Heidfeld. Oh. And Heidfeld saw that all happen in front of him. Piquet's damage, Burns in the barriers. And we are gonna have a safety car because that is not gonna move. Where you'll start to lose region shoot soon if we have damage, let us know. Okay, well, it, it might yes. be immaterial. PK could come in now and change into his second car and maybe still end up with track position behind the safety you car. Too much to continue. Yeah, this is going to go either a four course yellow or a safety car, and this will be a couple of laps to clear, so it may be enough, yeah, because if you're going to pit on lap 26, you know, three laps you yeah. may gain here might be enough to change car already. Massive shame because Vern and PK were having one hell of a battle. It's a shame to see it come to an end in this way. It was a bit of an over-optimistic move from Jean-Eric Vern. Around the outside, you're always just gonna get fed into the barriers. I don't think PK's really at fault. There's not a lot of space through there anyway. So other than that, nothing has happened. But this, if this brings out a safety car, it might trigger some early pit stops and some strategy changes. Degrassi might be tempted after his success in Mexico, where he died from the pits early. We'll have to see, because it's a hard one to call. Um, there's some big gaps, but that's not insurmountable in Formula E. 25 of 51 laps completed. So half the race down, half the race to go as we're on to lap 26. Sebastian Buemi leads. Lucas Degrassi, Nick Heidfeld, second and third. Nelson Piquet had a Mario Engel and Felix Rosenquist as was. And then the Still, uh, purple car, that's the out of position Jose Maria Lopez, the last one right at the top of your screen. He is not in that pack, or he is a lap down. And his teammate Sam Bird is now in the pits, did not come in behind the safety car. So that's it. he came in as the safety car went out and they went green. That's an interesting call. And not, I'm sure, one that I quite understand, but then that's why I'm not a team manager, maybe. So we go green once more in Monaco after the incident robbed the race of Jean-Éric Vern. And in the end, Nelson Piquet Jr. didn't lose out from that. He got back to the pits like all the other front runners under the safety car. And of course, Heidfeld got by into third because of that collision. He was right behind Vern and Piquet, who were at that stage fourth and third in front of him. And he dodged the carnage and, uh, and got through. So, of course, everybody went into the pits at the same time, so we're not even really going to get cars on different strategies now. They're all done. They're just going to get to the end of the race. There's less than a half distance to go as well, so energy should be fine for everyone. The only person who didn't pit was Sam Bird, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but he's going to drop... Well, he was at the back anyway, so I don't think it makes much difference, but he's jumping into his car a lap later than everyone else. He's going to have more energy, but he's a lap down, and... Their strategy just doesn't really make any sense. 
But other than that, we still got Berebi leading from Degrassi. Highfield has come up the field brilliantly. There's some few interesting names in the points with Jaguars around about there. Esteban Gutierrez is in the points again at the moment. Uh, PK is still up in fourth, even after contact with Vern. So we've got some top drivers at the top of the field and they're now all close together. So safety cars, breeze safety cars, but maybe we'll get some decent racing out of this. The race for that one. Ah, double yellows and that's a Faraday Future Dragon racing car. Wow. It's Jerome D'Ambrosio. Yeah, the Sunday black nose. Me on the inside. That oh, is he's off again. Okay, now that so that might have been just a reset. Yeah, you know, it might have stopped. You might have just had to reset I, the car. Should I should revert to uh... oh, VMS. Yeah. What do I do? He really pulled out of the queue there ahead of Stefan Sarazan, our other man with track boost, uh, oh, with fan boost. Uh, okay, let's get this on plug in quickly. Get this on. So I said in the last video that Dragon were not having the best season and unfortunately that looks like it's continuing because D'Ambrosio had to stop on track and is now going into the pits. Duval is pretty much nowhere in the race so again this might be another tough race for Dragon. Otherwise we still have the same status quo. Buemi still leads from Degrassi. Yeah, I mean, you still you can hear the coasting a lot into okay, that. Très bien. On ouvre le gap. Gap une seconde sept. But as you said, he, he'd rather have a nice little buffer. He's yeah. already got 1.7 seconds. But again, any extra potential you can get with that fan boost is going to be crucial. Well, you heard his engineer. Good job, Seb. You just doubled the gap. And that's what a difference it makes, having that extra boost of juice that nobody else can access, or only two others can access. Yeah. But of course, Degrassi, if he uses his, has to think of a better way of doing it, or all he's doing is neutralizing Buemi and they're back to step one. Yeah, but then, you know, Degrassi's not giving up. He was a, just only a tenth quicker in sector one and a tenth quicker in sector two, so he's not he's not letting me get away too much. But, uh, yeah, I think he's, he's really shown he's been so strong this weekend. So, so continuing on with Dragon, Duval's now out of the race as well. He's in the pit, so... Their terrible season is just continuing. They're not so much dragons as Pomeranians at this point. They are pretty pathetic. It's been a terrible season for Dragon, and that has continued here. Um, other than that, we've got 16 laps left, and there's very little action going on. This race has been very disappointing compared to Mexico City, although I think most races would be disappointing compared to Mexico City. We heard that Jerome D'Ambrosio's dash told him one lap too few. And now, Rosenquist, this race, is telling him one lap too many, so he needs confirmation from the team. Where are we? Because it's kind of busy to be counting these, and he's run out of fingers and toes anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not making it easy for him, but uh, it seems in terms of energy, they're very, very similar, so I think they're all on the same, uh, you know, it's not like he's particularly much higher than, than the rest of the guys, so I think by now he might be on, got things figured out for the team. The only man in that lead group with a little more energy was Daniel Apt on the back of that train, but only 1% or maybe half of 1%, depending on where you look at that power usage. So not an awful lot. I was just about to say that Lloyd Duval has uh, remained in the pit, but in fact he is now out, and Jerome D'Ambrosio in the pit lane after having to reset his car. So less than 10 laps to go. We still have Buemi and Degrassi out in front. The good battle on track looks like it's going to be Mara Engel versus Felix Rosenquist and Daniel Apt. Those three are pretty close. Other than that, the top 10 has remained pretty much the same throughout the entire race, bar one or two drivers now missing. Dragons, they're pretty much out of it. They've been in and out of the pits. Virgins, they're out of it. So there's four cars there that aren't going to feature and obviously Burns out as well. So there's chances of points here for some maybe outliers, the Andretti's, Jaguar, Esteban Gutierrez. They could be points for them, at least, in this race. But other than that, this has been a very, very tedious race. I mean, I compared it to Mexico City earlier, so it's not as exciting as Mexico. This has honestly been the worst race of Season 3 so far. And I'm pretty sure I said the same about Monaco, either in Season 2 or Season 1. This has not been the best track for Formula E, as it turns out. Now we're into the closing stages and they're setting the fastest laps because they're using the brakes purely for slowing the car down now. No more regen, so they're not having to kind of balance that up. It's now more of a pure out-and-out -out race car, but still, is he lifting and coasting? Let's listen. Yeah, even yeah. through there. 
Well, that's a big coast all the way through the swimming pool complex but, there. But then you can't pass. Can't pass there. No, not there. That's why he's picking his moments where he can save it and where he doesn't have to. We saw, uh, we saw Oliver Turvey, yes, Oliver Turvey staying out of the way there as the leaders came through. And that's a nice radio call from the next TV team to let him know the leaders are coming. So we're nearing the end of the race now and it's taken pretty much the whole thing, but De Grassi's finally catching up to Boemi with less than a second between them. Boemi looks like he's trying to save energy, so he might get a race over the last few laps, which will be a bit of a kick in the teeth, to be honest. Um, Nick Heidfeld is in third, and he's 12 seconds behind, so he's not going to feature in the fight for the win. And they've lapped Oliver Turvey, who is 11. So Boemi and De Grassi have dominated the field, which has kind of been the story of Formula E in the first three seasons. Those two drivers really head and shoulders above everyone else, which really brings into contrast in 2024 where they're maybe not so good. Boemi's had some good performances recently, but Degrassi's usually midfield at best. But in season three, they were incredible and really dominant. They have pretty much left this field behind. And all eyes on the leaders then. No point having it at the end of the race. Well, that's right. Uh, no, you don't want to take it home that. with you. <laughs> You've got to use it. And you may have waited too long here. Boemi target is 0.98. All right. Yeah, I mean, the cars do get a little bit harder to drive as the regen goes away. You have to lift that a little bit longer. You have to make sure you manage your braking right. That may have been uh, just the difference in the last few laps here, while the gap has kind of grown, but <laughs> look at this. It's got that little bit smaller again. Well, Lucas coming on to the final lap of the race here. If he's got fan boost left to use, left, left, left. now is the time to use it. We'll take a little look here. Oops, all got a little squirrely, and that might put a cat among the pigeons on the Louis final Duval. lap. Something happened over there. Yeah, keeps it going. He just clicked the inside of the corner. Last lap of the race. And if Degrassi's got something, oh, it's going to come as a surprise to all of us. Here he comes. Buemi the blue car, Degrassi the red and green and yellow car. And the longest game, straight. Our championship protagonist once more duking it out here for perhaps the most famous racetrack in single-seater racing. And Degrassi, has he still oh, got fan boost to go? How is he going to get by Sebastian Buemi? Has Buemi done enough to keep him bottled up? Two turns to go. Buemi's just got to hug the inside. Degrassi's not close enough, is he? Can he get him to the line? The sprint to the checkered flag is too short. It is going to be a fourth win of the year for Sebastian Buemi. Four out of five for the Swiss driver. Renault Edams claim victory. Lucas Degrassi in yeah, second Louis place. Super, super course. On était pas très rapide, super management. And some way behind, Nick Heidfeld will come home on the podium show, in show. third on spot. Show. There's the battle for fourth. PK Engel, Rosie Chris, Chris and Bien Ash joué. as Bravo. they were. And look at Degrassi. First down to 0% after the checker. Lucas Degrassi waited until the last corner to give us some excitement, but it wasn't enough. Sebastian Buemi wins his fourth race out of five in this Formula E season and continues to extend his lead in the championship after Lucas Degrassi closed it in Mexico. Other than that, this race was pretty boring. I cannot recommend going back and watching this one. If I was going to put a highlights package together for it, there's like a couple of accidents here and there. The Vern PK battle early on was pretty good until they crashed. Rosenquist and Apt had some good battles. And then the last lap for Buemi and Degrassi. Honestly, other than that, not a lot has happened this whole race. The top 10 is very similar to how it was at the start. So with that not recommendation, let's look at the drivers and team standings after the fifth round of Formula E in season three. Edams still lead the way, even though Nico Prost did not score many points at this one. Apt Audi in second, Mahindra doing fantastically in third with Tachita and Virgin rounding out the top five. Sebastian Buemi still leads the way, with Degrassi not too far behind. Nico Prost and John Eric Verne have fallen away a little bit, and Sam Bird, after his bad luck, is in fifth. So that was the Monaco E Prix of 2017. I'm going to be leaving Formula E alone for a while. I don't think the next round in modern days is till March, so we've got a couple of months. 
I'll probably leave off Formula E for a little while. We've done a lot of it recently. Moving on to other things. There'll be more videos of more motorsport coming soon. Formula One starts in just over a month, which is shocking how fast that's gone. In fact, a lot of motorsport kicks off in March, so that's pretty exciting. And so with that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and have a good one.